going on LEGO fans? Alex here. In this video, I'm going to go over some uh, basic steps of converting your Emerald Knight to a 9-volt train. We're going to actually use this 9-volt motor right here that I've held in reserve, especially for my Emerald Knight. Now, uh, previously, my Emerald Knight did have power functions. It had the power pack in the back. The uh, This actually motor was sitting here uh, where the engineer is. And, of course, I had my IR receiver here. I've taken that all out. I didn't really like the way power functions worked with this train because it just seemed slow it also seemed to I don't know the sound of it was kind of pathetic too I just wasn't really happy with it so I didn't really get it out very often so what we're gonna do is uh, add this 9 volt uh, motor to the Emerald Knight and see if it uh, increases its performance and uh, basically meets my um, my expectations so and that's all it that really matters here anyway so let's go over that and I'll, I'll, um, I'll show the steps uh, to you guys there at home all right, now one of the common problems with the Emerald Knight that I've experienced and I've noticed other people online as well is uh, when, this isn't a power functions issue, but as it's going forward it works just fine, but if you put it in reverse, it locks uh, almost every single time, and that's because of this piston here, uh, not, no, it's no longer straight, and you have to have it go forward and then backwards very slowly, but it was always a problem because almost 100% of the time it would keep locking like that and uh, it would just drive me crazy. Uh, again, that's not a power functions issue, that's more of a, uh, a functional issue with the train itself. I did watch some uh, videos out there and I think um, the best solution that I saw out there, I don't know if you can take this element off, but here we go. They actually doubled this piece up so there was two of them and that made it so this didn't, didn't have as much give that way. Uh, but for the uh, the purpose of making this work, I'm actually going to remove this piston completely. Now, if that upsets anybody at home, I'm very sorry. But I think it, the aesthetics of it still look pretty darn good. But without that piston there, um, it works all right. So until I get maybe uh, have the ability to double that up, I'm just going to keep this element off. So I'm going to take this off of both sides so I don't have that locking issue. And we'll go from there. All right, so the pistons are removed, and yeah, I know it looks like something is really missing there, which there is, but this is just a temporary fix. Uh, but now, the engine moves really easy in both directions, so problem temporarily solved there. So now the question is, where do we put this motor? Do we put it in the back? Ideally, that's the best. It's always in the back to give it the best amount of uh, torque. Um, not really enough room there, and we don't want to replace these in the middle. That's kind of the uh, the whole you know look of the, uh, the steam engine. And the front here, there's not really enough room either, and really you don't want it in the front anyway. So that kind of eliminates the idea of having the engine be the uh, the power. So now we look at the uh, the tender, and the tender has a lot of room in there, uh, but you're going to have to make some serious modifications. Other uh, any other option is the uh, the cabin back here or the passenger car. And I don't really like the idea of having two of these on either side because you really want it to be um, you want it to look similar on both ends. So that's kind of out of the question for me. So that leaves it up to the tender itself. All right, so our tender um, is ready to go. We're going to go ahead and just um, take off everything from the bottom here. And you're not going to need this at all, so you can put that in your storage trays. Put our box tender there for the moment here. So you're not going to keep either of these. The only thing you're going to keep are the uh, the buffers here, or the coupling, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to take the, uh, the coupling out of each one. And you'll keep one of these wheels, these axle wheels. I actually have an extra, have an extra one here, so I'm going to throw that one in the mix. So uh, I'm going to t uh, take these out of the way completely, as well as that uh, middle uh, piece. And so this, um, this piece right here, is since this is so long, you only need one extra one here to be the length of the, uh, the tender. So first let's put, off, let's put the, the motor on. So we'll put a cup link on the motor. Choose your side. And uh, the pivot's going to go inside the, uh, the most inner part, inner circle there in the middle. So it's not protruding too much. So it's going to look just like that. Okay. There you go. So obviously if this, this looks pretty good right there on the tender to the engine. So now we need one more axle to come in this, the back here. Now this does not need a pivot. It can be uh, completely fixed to the, um, the other side of your tender. So I put uh, some plates inside here to fill it up just slightly, one level. I'm going to take our coupling, put it on there. 
Now, what you'll also need is this needs to have one more plate underneath it to this. So I've got a 4x4 four four, uh, plate here. You need at least a 2x4 uh, to make this work. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it here. And we're going to attach that to the very front part of that plate. So it looks just like that. There's just enough room for that thing to move around without hitting that. Okay. There we go. Make sure it's not showing the track. And there is our 9 volts. So now we can put the train together. And uh, actually this uh, should work. So let's give it a test and I'll show you one more modification you're going to need to do to make it actually effective. Go ahead and do our first test. Back it up here a little bit. Looks like it's working pretty well. All right, now I'll go full speed. Now, before it even got to the camera, it was still not at full speed. There's a lot of wheel spin. See that? Okay, so what that means is that this tender does not have any traction. We need to weigh it down. Now there are a lot of options to uh, weigh this thing down with. There are even weights uh, that are authentic Lego uh, elements. Um, but today I'm actually going to use a little bit of an unconventional method. I'm going to use pennies. Yes, these little copper coins are going to do the trick for me. All right, so now I'm not, I'm not going to just throw these pennies in there. That would look horrible. So. Uh, there is a method to my madness here. Uh, I'm going to have some elements I'm going to throw in here to make this work. This is hollow underneath this back part. So I'm going to put this uh, little wall element here in the back so it stops my uh, pennies from going back there. So I just want the pennies to be directly over these wheels. That's all that really matters here. And since the pennies aren't the full length of the back here, I'm going to go ahead and put some bricks inside here. Maybe... And it's going to be a total of uh, seven studs long that we're doing this. So that's what they look like in there. And our pennies will just line up right here. And that's all they're doing. All right, so my pennies are installed. They're all just lined up right here. I really don't know how many pennies I've used, but it just goes the full length or seven studs. And there's still a little bit of air right here or space between the pennies and the studs um, that I put in there. So if I shake this, it makes uh, a bit of a rattle. So... What I do is I got this um, one by eight uh, plate, and I'm just going to open up the front here and slide it in between. This is gonna, not going this way; it's going actually uh, vertical. And I'm going to put that between the pennies and the bricks that I put in there, and it'll act as a buffer or a spacer or whatever you want to call it, so these don't go back and forth. There's not any. There may be a little bit of rattling, I guess, but not as much, obviously, as before. Okay, so that is there. Now we just need to make a roof so this isn't exposed, so people don't say, uh, is that thing hauling uh, pennies around? And all I've done for that, I just made my own roof. You guys can, can do whatever you want here, but um, I got some roof elements I just put in the back here. And uh, I already pre-made this. This is just, I don't know, <laughs> kind of a very smooth uh, top here uh, that I put on, and uh, that'll just fit nice and easy. And I did put these um, three of these two by four blocks on there as well. So that'll just go right over that. Whoops, let's push down. So it's nice and flush on the top, so it looks nice and smooth. And this thing is uh, quite heavier. Now you don't want to make it so heavy that it destroys the performance of your train, um, but you want it just enough to give this some good traction. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Okay, we're ready for our test. Let's go ahead and back this thing up to the train station. I'll go ahead and give this thing full speed here. Oh yeah, that's that's much better. So there is a little bit of wheel spin, but that's to be expected. Every train's going to have some wheel spin, but you'll notice that it yeah it digs into the track much better. So I think that was a, a success, you guys, and. Uh, um, I, I'll leave it like this. So I'll use, leave this as my uh, my passenger train uh, that actually goes around the loop for now. Let's get, let's get some shots of that.
wraps up this video of converting the Emerald Knight to a 9 volt train. I hope you enjoyed that, or at least were entertained. I do have a big video for the uh, LEGO City Update residential area. Stay tuned for that. I'm just waiting on one more order to get to me. And I will catch you guys next time, and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you.